Guys, it's Sunday, day eight of eight days in a row riding up here on my single speed. That's what I'm at. I got, I put a, a taller gear, which means a, a, a smaller cog in back, 21 tooth. So it's a 32, 21. And uh, that's how it's set up right now. It's a little bit more of a grind up here, especially with these meteor tires. These tires have more bite to them, so it's a little bit harder to pedal. Um, but there are more traction. And these are also durable tires, the durable casing, which is a thicker, heavier casing, which um, is nice for protecting your rim and giving it a, a, a little more hard feel, but then also it takes away that supple feel. So I've been trying to figure out which uh, lenses to wear. Like right now in the afternoon, uh, it's really bright. I got these lenses right now. They're like my darkest lenses. And um, let's see how those work. But then as it, it, gets, it gets dark really quickly, I got some clear lenses, my goggles. I kind of like goggles better, but I don't have a bunch of... It's a pain to change the lens and the goggles. It's easier to change them on the glasses or just take off my glasses and throw my goggles on. So here we go. And uh, we'll head down the mountain. I'm going to point this up a little bit. So when I'm in sight, in my aggressive riding position, you have a better view. It's beautiful weather. It was actually hot. So it went from being like 60 degrees, 60 something degrees all week to now it's probably 80 degrees or 70 degrees. Well, one thing I forgot to do, I got to do, is my watch. So I have my polar heart rate monitor watch that I always that I always wear. But when I'm, especially on a fully rigid bike, when I'm pouncing down the trails, just the the vibrating around of the watch kind of bothers me. So I tight, I cinch it up so it's not pouncing around. And uh, all right, that's better. I like. To have my data I have data saved in two methods I have it on my well several methods but two initial methods um, on my polar heart rate monitor which right now it's picking up my heart rate with my chest strap but it could pick it up with the wrist uh, just a chest strap is more accurate and then my Garmin which is picking it up with the chest strap obviously the Garmin has some other cycling features to it, and it's probably better at the GPS stuff. Of course, it has the maps and all that stuff in there, so it makes it nice. I was never a Garmin person because they didn't come out till after years of me using Polar stuff. So when I switched over and bought my first Garmin, which this is my first Garmin on here, the Garmin Edge 530. When I bought this one, I just didn't really want to stop that continuous data that I have on my on my Polar. And so I do both, and then I eliminate one from the secondary collection of data, which is Strava, and there's a few other ones that secondarily collect my data. I'm sure you can see the sun going right into my eyes, it's going right into the camera. And I'm almost hitting some of those big rocks. Which on a fully rigid bike is not what you want to do. You know, probably bend my rim or you can have a flat right away. Now you guys know I am always tubeless and I'm always running super low air pressure to get a little more of a supple feel out of my tires. So today I'm running um, 15 pounds of pressure in the rear and um, 14 in the front. 
the front is a bigger tire on a wider rim but it's a light and supple tire so or a thinner wall casing thinner casing wall I should say so it um, it it's gonna have a it's gonna have more give at a higher pressure whereas the rear is a thicker casing but it's also a uh, a um, on a more narrow rim and it's a more narrow tire which a more narrow tire would indicate it would be not able to go as low but I think because of the thicker casing it really helps it go that low so that's why I'm able to do it at 15 pounds and I weigh 160 so that's the other thing too I'm I'm pretty uh, light it's all proportionate to your body weight too how low a tire pressure you want to go and a little bit a lot to do with your tires and your your rim width and the terrain you're riding and if you have tubeless I'm tubeless obviously um, also if you're running rim pack or push core that makes a huge difference because that acts as a volume spacer in there I love this part it's just amazing how how nice this upper section stays in comparison to the lower section Winding in sections. The other yesterday, I was riding. I came up over this hill. There's like there's only one little. Well, there's a couple little sections that you climb on El Prieto. I mean, they're little sections. They're only like 10 feet or, or you know, 30 feet at the most. I think one of them, the longest one, is maybe uh, maybe longer, maybe 50 feet. And I was coming up one of those little sections that was like 10 feet. And literally, as soon as I crest, the sun came in my eyes and kind of blinded me. And then there was people hiking there. And I didn't hit them, but I was climbing and I was going kind of slow. But I had to put my foot down, which you guys know I don't like to dab. But it is what it is. So I'm going to post this up right away and see how many people watch it. And I want to ask you guys, should I continue this streak of daily bike rides on my single speed? Should I take a rest day? Or should I take a day with a geared bike? So choice A, keep going, bro. Choice B, take a rest. Choice C, take an easy day with a geared bike so you guys help me decide and I'm gonna see what your comments are for those that are making comments and I really appreciate the people that are watching and subscribing and occasionally making comments. I think cycling is fantastic. I love it. And if I can influence one of you or a few of you to realize that 
exercise can be fun and health is wealth get out there and ride your bike it doesn't have to be up in the mountains in this extreme but just get out there and ride ride on the sidewalk with your kids who cares just to get active and get out there and enjoy being outdoors if you're in an area that you can be outdoors thank god i'm in an area that i can and i do get outdoors eight days in a row now riding my bike and that's another reason why i've been riding daily is that i know we're going to hit now california we don't hit a lot of rain and we don't hit a lot of cold but there are going to be days that we have some a little bit colder days maybe some windy days or something like that and then i'm going to say man i wish i was uh, able to go outside and ride my bike and i don't want to say that knowing that i didn't take advantage of all those days that i could have been riding my bike because it's just perfect right now it was hot today actually but I'm okay. I, I'd rather it be a little bit too hot than too cold. But it was nice on like Monday, Tuesday when it was it was colder and you don't even hardly sweat coming up and you feel invigorated and then you get up here and you put on a light windbreaker jacket to go down and that's just about perfect. If it's wind, if it's windbreaker weather, I'm okay with it when it's that cold. But when it starts getting to where I start to have to 